Coming up on Wavelength, meet new LCRA board chair Gail Linky. Come along as thousands march in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. Meet some of LCRA's newest employees and take a trip home on the Colorado River with a man and his best friend. It's all next on Wavelength. Hi everyone, welcome to the February 2002 edition of Wavelength. Well, by now, most of you around the company have seen or heard of the LCRA House, which is home to the foundation principles upon which the LCRA is built. I'm talking about uh, taking advantage of... General Manager Joe Beal introduced this new business model to the company recently through a video presentation that is currently available throughout the organization. We must care about every life that we touch. At the January meeting of the LCRA Board of Directors, new board chair Gail Linke reinforced the importance of understanding and accepting these core values. I firmly support our general manager in his organizational structure that has five core basic values as its building blocks. Safety. First, and always first, is safety. We do dangerous work, and we do work that should not be considered so dangerous, but we must do it all very safely. The environment. Our environmental policy must be so complete and our actions so sure that there leaves no doubt in anyone's mind about our commitment to the river. Texas must know that we care about the Colorado River. Employee focus. When all is said at the end of the day, and everything that we do is taken away, we are people. We can insist on all of those values, but if we don't care about our people, we can't expect them to have those values or to practice them. Customer service. I know what it means to have a customer who's not happy, and I know what it means to lose a customer who you didn't treat right, or maybe you didn't do anything at all for them. We must know how to give every customer that we serve a level of cu customer service that is way beyond their expectation. And this is important for every level of this organization. Diversity. Diversity makes our lives rich. And embracing those differences in our workplace makes our workplace rich. This organization touches communities we serve in many ways, and we must mirror those communities and our commitment to their diversity. It must ring true in our workplace and in our interactions with all those communities who rely on us. Now add to this foundation the rooms of the house, LCRA's lines of business, wholesale power services, transmission services, community services, water services, and corporate services. The employees that deliver these services make this LCRA house a home. In December and January, the Board of Directors honored LCRA's Rangers and security personnel for their around-the-clock work protecting LCRA facilities following the September 11th attacks on America. Lance Bullington. Not long after receiving his service ribbon, Ranger Lance Bullington, a member of the U.S. Army Reserves, was called to active duty. Lance has been an LCRA Ranger for two years. He says he loves the job and the people he works with. But Lance is also a staff sergeant and medic in the U.S. Army Special Forces. He has been in the military for over 14 years and has had to leave home and family behind many times before. It's difficult, you know, I, I, I deploy all the time throughout the year, you know, in over 14 years. It doesn't get any easier than you think it would, but it, it actually, you know, gets a little harder each time. So time is very critical right now and the clock is kind of ticking down for us right now, so every you know, minute is precious. This time, Lance is leaving behind his wife, Kelly, and two-and-a-half-year-old son, Hunter. Kelly is expecting their second child in April. Lance's unit is currently training in Colorado, and they will deploy to an overseas assignment soon. Joe Beal and the Board of Directors took an extraordinary step in December, establishing a policy to make up the difference in pay for any LCRA employee called to active duty.
what a statement that, that Joe and, and this company has made for our military folks uh, to do that. Uh, you know, to, to say we're going to take care of you financially while you're gone and we support what you do and your mission that you're doing. So it, it's a huge statement and uh, I know Lance appreciates it and I know all the military people appreciate it. That's 35. 10 I'll see you down there. Bullington says that the outpouring of support for his family from friends and co-workers has been unbelievable. It makes me feel great. I mean, people are really uh, bearing down to help out in any way they can. They're, they're really trying to come together in a genuine fashion. And it's, uh, it's phenomenal. You know, I, I did not expect the support that we had and uh, and still continuing to get. We'll stay in touch with Lance via email and we'll keep you updated on his status. One day right bad in Alabama, a little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. It is one of the most famous speeches ever made and its message of tolerance and brotherhood rings true today and will far into the future. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. LCRA's celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday took on added significance this year because this marks the first time that MLK Day is an official holiday for LCRA employees. We didn't do that so you had an extra day to go fishing or shopping. We did that as a way that we can, as the Board of Directors, as the policy-making body of this organization, embrace the diversity that this organization represents. If we are to serve the people of our communities that we serve, we must also embrace the differences and the cultures that are in those communities. So we made diversity an issue. And this year, we are embracing that by having this as an employee holiday. Austin's LBJ High School Choir provided inspirational music for the event, and Travis County Judge Sam Bisco delivered the keynote address to an overflow crowd at the general office complex. And what I like about these programs on uh, Martin Luther King Day uh, is that you see a variety of races represented. So it's not simply African Americans, but it's everybody. And I think the, the, the message of brotherhood and sisterhood is taking. As the Texas morning broke clear and crisp, thousands gathered at Houston Tillotson College in East Austin for a day of celebration and remembrance. LCRA General Manager Joe Beal was chosen as honorary chair of the event and spoke of his personal journey towards tolerance and understanding. I believe this understanding became most clear to me in a medevac helicopter in Vietnam when I looked at the broken bodies of white, black, Hispanic, and Vietnamese soldiers. These were all just people, equal people. That is when I started my journey of understanding the need for a better culture in the U.S. As we begin our march, I ask you to reflect on the lessons of Dr. King. Let every step ring true with his words. Let us renew our responsibility to care and support one another. Let us renew our commitment to serve our community and to promote understanding, compassion, and equity. Now, let us march together to the Texas State Capitol in celebration of our unity as one community. We are Austin. Thank you. I got my two kids here and they're enjoying it. When they see Martin Luther King, King's picture, they say they, they feel like he's still alive. The turnout is great this morning. I mean, you just look around and see all these people with all the t-shirts on. Um, I heard Joe say we might have 500 people here. That's just amazing. Delighted and thrilled to um, march here for Dr. Martin Luther King and continue his legacy on. It's a fabulous day for a march. And it, this happens every year, and it's a great thing. It's a good sign. I have a dream that one day all of the children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics,
the past eight years, I've had the privilege and the honor to serve as city manager. But I think there comes a time when it's appropriate for someone to make a change in their life, and that time is now for me. Jesus Garza, retiring Austin city manager, has been hired by the LCRA as deputy general manager in charge of water operations and environmental resources. Garza has worked on water issues for most of his career and says he is excited by the new challenge. I have always been impressed with the, the employees from the professional staff and others that I've met at LCRA. Uh, it's a loyal, dedicated group of, of, uh, of folks, public servants, who are interested in public service. And uh, I'm just tickled to be able to join that, uh, join that team and be part of that family. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Garza will join LCRA in May. You may have seen small groups of wide-eyed, enthusiastic, slightly lost-looking folks at the general office complex recently. Never fear, it's just another class of new LCRA employees on their orientation tour. If you need more information, go ahead and look up the information under the contacts. You could say that Maggie Parks is the official LCRA greeter. For new employees, she's the guide and host who helps prepare them for their first day on the job. It's very gratifying for me to be able to give these folks the basic tools they need, to give them information, to have a little fun, to put them at ease, because it's very stressful just starting a new job. Years ago, orientation was held just once a quarter and took only a few hours. Currently, a new group of employees comes through every other week. This is due in part to the rapid growth in LCRA's transmission and water services. We've also expanded the program based on the feedback that we've had, not only from the new employees, but from their supervisors, that people need to know more about LCRA when they come to work here and that first day they arrive on the job. They need to know something more about what we're doing, why we're out there doing it, how they're expected to behave, and what kind of questions they're going to get from their friends and their relatives about what it is to work at LCRA. Bill Freeman gives his up-close-and-personal with upper management presentation to each new group of employees. LCRA's workforce is definitely changing, becoming more diverse, not only in ethnicity and gender, but in cultural background, job skills, and experience. You should have your personal enrollment form. Um, you should also have your benefits orientation book. The three-day program includes presentations on benefits, the history and mission of LCRA. All property of LCRA is to be used for LCRA purposes and ethics. If a fire is discovered, move to a safe location, pull an alarm box, and then evacuate the building. Safety and technology training. Wrap it around the drum, sling it around, whatever you want to uh, turn over. But without a doubt, the most popular part of orientation is the facilities tour. Right beam actuates it, forces right shield against the wheel. Employees visit a dam, a power plant, and a park. They get to meet employees in the field and see firsthand what they do. I have to say everyone's kindness and support, everyone's really willing to help you in any way that they can. I come from a utility experience in Illinois, and the LCRA seems to be a very outstanding company. Everyone takes a lot of pride in what they do. I'm nervous and I'm excited. I'm really excited about working for this company. I hope to retire here in 30 years or so. School was great, I gotta tell you, after working for four and a half years and going back to school for 16 months, it was an excellent thing to do. Uh, but I'm out of money and it's, it's time for that phase of my life to end. I'm ready to get to work. So as we go about our daily work, the energy and excitement of these new employees should be an inspiration to us all. In the coming months, we'll be covering stories that directly relate to the LCRA core of values and to try to humanize them whenever possible. This month, we have 26-year-old Jason Jamar of Marble Falls to thank for reminding us of how precious the Colorado River is and why protecting it is an important part of our mission. Growing up along the Colorado River in Marble Falls, Jason Jamar never dreamed that one day he would paddle up it. But there he was with his companion BJ, making 20 miles a day on the final stretch of a two-year adventure. After high school, I knew I wasn't ready to go off to college yet. I knew I'd kind of waste my time there. So I decided to enlist with the United States Marine Corps. 
that didn't quite cure my sense of adventure. And so when I got out, I decided to take some time to myself and do my own thing for a couple of years. And uh, me and a couple of buddies got this idea that we'd uh, walk across the United States. He walked from California to Maine with BJ at his side. But then he realized he needed a way to get home. So he pulled out a map. And uh, I got to seeing how the Allegheny ran into the Ohio River, into the Ohio, into the Mississippi. Then there's the Gulf Coast, and well, there's Texas, and well, there's the Colorado River, and that goes to Marble. I can go home. And I thought, this is what I'll do. The route seemed simple enough, but Jason didn't have a boat. So he spent the winter building one and set sail in March. Along the way, Jason passed the World Trade Towers. Just a few weeks later, they were gone. But as horrible as that event was, it wasn't the scariest thing to happen. Late one night, while navigating in alligator territory in Louisiana, a mullet jumped into BJ's cockpit. The dog got spooked and jumped into the water. And there's no BJ. It's too foggy, I can't find him, and I, I'm pretty frantic because I've had this dog since he was two weeks old. He's walked across the country with me. He's kayaked with me. He's pretty, pretty much my kid. And uh, now I've lost him. And he's either going to get chopped up under the rotor, uh, propellers of that boat or he's going to be eaten by an alligator. And my real fear was that he's going to get eaten. And uh, I'm hollering and screaming and I can't find him. I'm looking everywhere and several minutes pass and, and uh, you know, my heart's kind of sinking. And that, that's actually probably the most scared I've ever been because of the, the thought that I was going to lose him. When asked to compare the Colorado to the mighty Mississippi and the Ohio, he said there's no question which one he'd prefer to be on. Uh, I'd say the Colorado puts Mississippi to shame. It's, it's a cleaner, clearer river, and there's not as much garbage. Uh, there's hardly any litter on this river, whereas opposed to Mississippi, uh, you get sections where it's really nasty. From there, Jason let the water carry him to the Gulf of Mexico, where he turned his kayak against the current of the Colorado River and began the last leg of his journey home. In Bastrop, he met someone very special, Jennifer Garcia, who works for LCRA's water division. She's been helping him navigate the river and sending him maps and keeping him posted on the daily water hey, flow of the Colorado. Good, good. This Hi. is Jennifer Garcia. Hey, it's a pleasure nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet <laughs> the you. voice on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Jason called one day when he was down in Matagorda Bay and said he was on his way up and had told me about his journey from Maine to Matagorda Bay, and uh, that's when we started our conversations about once a week. Uh, they prepared these maps for me, and they're aerial photo shots of the river, and they correspond with uh, this guidebook that the LCRA puts out for uh, canoeing the river. Of course, most people generally go downstream. And uh, really great little guidebook, and uh, they have all, like, this little park they're sitting out right here, all corresponds with the book, so these excellent maps. As Jason headed out of Austin, he could feel the pull of Marble Falls, but there were still three dams to portage over. Now, when I was uh, getting around uh, Mansfield Dam with the help of the LCRA, uh, one of the guys there, had, one of the rangers actually, had mentioned uh, about the Abilene Boys. They had paddled down the Colorado River, and I thought that was pretty inspiring. But when I heard they were 70 years old, oh, I felt like I was uh, in light company and I hope I'm able to do the same when I'm that age. On January 27th, after more than 3,700 miles and nearly a year on the water, Jason Jamar pulled ashore, tired, broke, and above all, grateful. On behalf of BJ and myself, we really like to say thank you, and we look forward to seeing you on the river. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Joe. Joe Beal, from, he's the general manager of the LCRA, joins us this morning, and he is taking part in the community march going on this morning for Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Joe, how long has the LCRA been involved in this march? Uh, for several years. Mm -hmm. um, last year, um, I participated in the march myself along with a lot of our employees. Um, and also last year, our board decided to make uh, this day a holiday for LCRA. Now, did you guys hear from the folks from the Heritage Council before doing that? Is it something that you heard a speech or you heard somebody talk that influenced that decision? No, it, it more nearly came from our employees. Uh -huh. um, our employees have participated um, and 
suggested that uh, that I become involved, and, and I did. And um, the more I began to learn about the march and, and about the uh, the Heritage Council's work, the more should I got in it. Yeah, that's my next question. What have you learned since your involvement? Um, I've learned that it's a that, that the march itself and the uh, the activities itself is something that uh, we all should be participating in. Um, last year, after I marched, uh, I felt better about myself. Um, I felt better about our community, and I thought it was just a really good thing. Yeah, because a lot of the uh, black community say that it's not just a day to honor you know, the Civil Rights Movement and Dr. Martin Luther King, but also to honor the freedom of all of us That's and true. the entire community. That's true. So, um, His message was one of, of peace, was one of inclusiveness, was one of of uh, understanding different cultures and then celebrating those cultures and that's what we should be doing here in Austin today. What does it mean to you to be involved in something like this, Joe? Um, it's different for me. I've, um, I have told people in the past that um, uh, as a young man um, I was taught differently uh, from the way that I feel today. I was uh, taught that there really was a difference in people. Mm -hmm. um, now I understand that uh, we all are just people. Mm -hmm. uh, we all are equal. Uh, so this has been a, uh, a long journey for me and a journey that I'm still on mm -hmm. um, and a journey that LCRA is still on. In early December, Texas Parks and Wildlife, in partnership with LCRA, released over 1,500 rainbow trout in the Lake Austin, just below Mansfield Dam. Kids and their parents were invited out to fish as part of the Junior Angler Education Program. Yeah, but that one was a huge one. Parks and Wildlife employees will stock some 240,000 fish at 100 locations all over the state this year. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We look forward to seeing you again next time.